we're dialed in there. Make sure my zoom window I can slide. Well, let me make sure my keyboard maestro is up. My goodness. I hate when you get a reboot a computer. All right, let me get rid of this. Get rid of this. Make sure my zoom window can move. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, I guess two things. It's the day after a holiday. <laughs> and uh, the odds of me sticking or staying on Zoom are probably slim with these major storms we have in our area. So good morning. Love the idea of the new indicator you mentioned this morning. The briefing also the trade of you is a great Memorial Day sale all week. Great reminder. Thank you, Mark. Great reminder. Um, so yeah, I'm going to see how that thing works in real and the size of that candle. Let me turn this off. High drawings. Let me hide this, uh, strong levels. So, um, you know, it looks, uh, let's save and reload. It looks great. Um, we'll see how it works during live trading. You know, sometimes your indicator, you don't know until you start getting live feed. <laughs> um, um, but it only going to work during the RTH hide drawings. Um, but it, the, the scale of this is based off the size of NQ the previous day in relation to ES. Um, I do have an adjustment setting in here that can move these to the left or right, but I also probably need an adjustment that says, all right, let's scale this smaller. Actually, the adjustment moves this chart up or down. I So we'll see. I, I'm just going to, it literally is in micro development. It may not even work. <laughs> I don't know. Do I get live data? Um, I just know. So this scale here, is based off this candle because this is taking Friday's data. Okay. So pretend we're in the middle of Friday or we're at the end of Friday right now. This is what it would look like. And if you went back and double look, you'd see NQ did close right there in relation to the high, low, and mid. Uh, Dow closed right there in relation to its low, high, mid. And this is where Russell. Um, so it is accurate. It just, let's see how it plays in real time. I mean, I would love the idea of having that there and I can just slide this over real quick and take a peek or I can just keep it there. Um, I'm not an expert enough of a programmer. I mean, I would have loved to have kind of had that just setting over here. Um, in the lower left, but that's just not going to really happen. Um, so I, I, I don't have those skills yet. So I'm excited about it. It should be helpful. Okay. So news drivers, you know, I really want to change something here. Um, let's see, going to do my best here. And how do I do that? Nope, not that. All right, and good morning, YouTube. Hey, nice to see you guys. Okay. Let me play with this a little bit because you guys, YouTube cannot see my drawing, so I've got to change something up. I've got to go to my primary display. All right, question YouTube people because I don't want to pull up my laptop. Do you see a green box? That's the Zoom box. I was just curious if that green box is showing up. I would assume it is because um, it's streaming that. Um, which is fine. I don't think it's annoying. Um, I just want more. But if I share my entire screen, you can see my drawings, which I think is very helpful. Um, I'm going to move that out of the way and I want to make, can I make this bigger? There we go. I want to make that bigger. 
because that's what's more important. If I get into a trade, I'll slide my Dom over. That's how I do that. Um, I don't, we don't need to see that. I want to just go right there. So any of my current members, you know, one thing that I tell you guys, if you ever have anybody who you think would be a good addition to our group, um, I'll always extend a free zoom pass. So if you ever have anyone interested in learning what we do, um, I have no problem in giving someone a front row seat. Some of you started with a one day zoom pass. Okay. So let's, um, all right, six minutes to the opening. I also want to put this on here guys, because we got that red folder news event at the top of the hour. Um, let's move that up here. Nine o'clock AM. So let's get that started. Let's get that party started. All righty. All righty. All righty. Let's turn this stuff back on and the lights are on. So, um, I had you Mark on the, I, I didn't mention it in the AM briefing. But on the Sunday night, we were marking these. They're now tested. I'm going to remove the bottom one. I'm just going to keep the top one. I'm going to put the word tested. So that makes the most sense to me. Um, this Asia overnight low is really Friday's half back as well, guys. Um, really, you should treat, although I've marked this as RTH low, in all honesty, the right way to treat this is this is all an overnight session. This had no volume is really the way to look at it. This is all part, all of this actually is part of an overnight session is really the proper way to look at it, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. I log into TradingView in ES Mini, but how do I get my chart up? Um, that is beyond my ability to answer that question here. How do you get your chart up? I logged into trade of eight and ES mini, but how do I get my chart up? I don't know. I only use the app. I'll be honest. Um, and I actually emailed you back, um, mock three monk, um, several of my traders trade in queue exclusively. They use my narrative of ES to help them get into trades. Cause one of the things that we always are doing is we're coming and comparing where we are at in relation to everybody else. So I am constantly monitoring NQ as well. I just don't personally trade NQ because I think to trade NQ, you need to chart trade. And I don't really chart trade that well. Um, it's something I'm working on, but yeah. Um, so, I, you know, it's one thing about emailing people back. You don't know if it ever gets delivered. I, I, I wish I had a, there was a better way <laughs> to communicate. Maybe because most traders have a discord count. Maybe I need to have a support discord group <laughs> where if, that way it's easy to make sure you got it i got it um so sorry if there was a delay in answering that um but yeah i don't know what super charts are are these levels on screen now part of one of mark b Um, if you're on zoom right now, you have access to all my indicators. George. Yes. What I mean is, um, the levels I'm seeing on the screen, obviously on zoom, I can see them. I was just curious, <clears throat> curious if those are part of the indicators package on trader review, or you just have them here. The levels you are currently looking at here. Yes. These are the levels I've drawn. Okay. So they're but not, no. I, so okay, I'm, I'm just not seeing, I'm not seeing all of those on my trading view. That's why I asked. No, you're not. The only thing you're going to see, um, are the, the are the, that's what it was. um, the only thing is the strong levels. Um, okay, that's fine. I, I just wanted to be sure that I wasn't. These are, yeah, these are the, the these are just the levels I would want to make 100% sure were on your chart. 
Got it's it. kind of what I'm is kind of where I was thinking. All right. So it's that's clear. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Market is open and we did what? Nothing. <laughs> we have um, extreme divergence over here. Russell going straight up, Dow going straight down, us at the halfbacks. There's literally nothing here of interest to me. Um, typically, I'm trading the three-minute chart, Kim. Um, let's see. Um, three-minute charts, our core chart, this is where we like to... Um, this is our home base, for lack of a better word. We will trade lower time frames based off uh, what's happening on the chart. I want to keep this overnight range, but I want to lower the opacity. All right. So all of this is, if you made me pick bull bear, all this is still bullish, without a doubt. Um, play is long or flat, but we're in the middle of this big range. So that doesn't make me that excited. I can bring on the colors. It's just too much for my eyes right now. Um, but we're in the, this gray area here. This is the definition of the middle of the middle. And I'm not that interested in, in trading it. Um, all right. So I'm going to monitor that over here. I want to see how that's going to work. Let me reload that NQ candle. Cause it, now I got it. Now I get to see it live. So we'll see <laughs> if, if I'm even close to this thing being. So let me go look where everybody is right now. So Dow, Dow is way down here. Russell is up there. Okay. So the scale is correct. All right, so I'm going to turn off this. I don't need this um, right now. Honestly, I think my strong levels gives me where I'm really at. We have all of this liquidity below us. All right, let's tighten this up. I'm only keeping that diagonal line on there, as I said in the AM briefing. Sorry, it got out a little bit later. I had to. Keep, we keep losing electricity here. So, by the way, YouTube. My Zoom, I lose electricity again. I'm just going to close it down. I've rebooted so many times. I've had to redo this so many times today. I'm not going to do it again. Um, they're calling for severe weather and flash flooding. And and my daughter graduates today outside. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work. So I will not be here in the afternoon. All right. Boy, we are literally going nowhere. And, um, you know, PCEs later in the week, that is what the market is waiting for. Um, we had a monster Thursday. This is the first real RTH session. And the RTH session after a holiday stinks. Today is the day to scale down, trade small, um, if at all. My humble opinion, your mileage may vary. All right, so how do I? All right, just like I said this morning, we need something new to happen. We need something new to happen. So 25 minutes to a uh, red folder. Hopefully that will be the thing that kind of knocks price around a little bit and we can get some action. The top of the hour is consumer confidence. Uh, they survey 3000 households and ask the respondents the rate of relative level of current and future economic conditions, including labor availability, business conditions, and overall economic situation. All right, so what do households, what is their consumer confidence? 
That's at the top of the hour. Good time to wait. Let things shake out. You know, and if we take the entire, like I said, all these sessions right here, in my humble opinion, is just an overnight. So let's come in here and draw from here to here. Where's halfback? Halfback is right where we're at. So not only we're halfway in the of this long high time frame range, we're in the middle of these five low volume nothing sessions. All right. Let's go take a peek at everybody else. Is anyone tilting their hand? Look at Russell pulling back in. Dallas still down under half back. Looks like ES is is stronger than NQ here. You know, and I remarked, careful with longs below. We take this out. I think we've got a really strong move south. Um, but what do I know? We'll measure, we'll trade the levels as they're presented. Certainly feels like continual failure of the bulls to get it higher. Um, doesn't really give me a trade. So we got the overnight low here. And then yesterday's low volume RTH low certainly targets. All right, so let's zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to go take a peek at everybody else here. Okay. So we lost that trend line. That's a that's a thing. And uh, coming to these levels, if we get up underneath this overnight low, um, I'm I still have to lean the play as longer flat, more of a liquidity grab, come back in, see what happens. The bears have really got to prove to me by a strong shift in market structure that they're going to want to take this down. 22 minutes to news. We're entering into a no trade zone by time. My humble opinion. And Mr. Toby. I asked several times in the group this weekend, you must be busy on the French Riviera or something. How did that, what, the total of that trade on Friday where you were in those multiple ES contracts and added to your trade and it went 20 points. What was the end story of that? Oh, let me check, George. Sorry, I had a lot going on this weekend. I understand, dude. No, no, didn't travel too far. <laughs> I want. I was curious the end result of that. A very lackluster opening. So far, six points. <laughs> okay. A lot of people defending price here. Don't prediction trade. I sure wish we had a tool to cancel tested orders. What does that mean? Nice coffee this morning. Once a level is tested, you're open. Oh, okay. Sure. That would be nice, wouldn't it? All right, I'm going to go ahead and draw in the overnight high here. Just to have it not low, high. Go to overnight high. Um, now this break level is tested, but, it, but that ladder, this is a 30 minute ladder point at 42, but that liquidity has not been taken. If we shot straight up, I might be interested in a short against that, against this liquidity grab, against the back test of trend. Let me throw this on. It's deep within the red area. I would certainly be interested in that. 
um, a long, I would need to see a liquidity grab down here and it starts laddering back up, um, preferably to 12. I would love to see it come to 12 here, grab this, come back to the bull bear line, the bulls step in, we get above that, and then we can run up here and maybe even grab that liquidity. That would be awesome. So we need something new to happen. Seems like the rain has calmed down out there. Did you get electricity back up, Mr. James Paul? We both live in DFW. Yes, I did. Thank you. Cool. <clears throat> Wow. All right. Well, maybe this number will uh, shake the cage for us. But it is the Monday after a holiday. I'm telling you, these are horrible days to trade. <laughs> but, man, I am chomping at the bit to trade. but it may not happen today. And it stinks because it kills a Tuesday. Tuesday are usually, actually Tuesday is the number one day of the week for our system. And unfortunately it's the day after a holiday, so. Think about the number of people here trying to defend price. It may not be as many as we think because this is such low volume pricing. All right. We wait. That's the hardest part of trading is waiting. It's better than digging ditches, I guess. <laughs> And Kim had asked a question about what time frame on MES. Well, for us, um, our, our, our end of the day charts, everything is taught on the three minute chart. But, um, the truth is that, uh, depending on where we're at in price and what just happened, I will drop to lower time frames to scalp, um, higher time frames for more option type of plays. But three minutes is our core basic chart traders do trade the one minute but one thing you'll learn about the one minute is there's less people defending price so if you trade a lower time frame have lower expectations and and i addressed this earlier but just to bring it up again that yes people do trade nq in our group as well i do not specifically create strong levels for nq or anything like that there will there are things for ES that we pay attention to, and then you have to extrapolate that to NQ. Um, but we have several NQ traders. All right. Well, nice off the opening. Let's go check everybody else out real quick. Recipe for complex chop. There's no other way to look at it. So where are we all in relation to halfback? Boy, NQ is proven to be the weaker. All right, let's come back into here. 14 minutes to uh, news, almost no trade zone by time. If it grabbed this liquidity and gave us a reaction, we do have this strong level here. Um, and if we go back a little bit, that strong level has really done amazing. 
at supporting price. So if it pushed down here to this overnight low here, this London overnight low, that could represent a good, um, if you're interested in a knife catch type of trade there, or we could wait for evidence of laddering back up and see if that's what it wants to do. Bumping our head against the uh, top of the hour. Now this strong level though, <laughs> um, whatever juice it's had, it has been tested many, 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 many times. As you can tell evidence, there's two lows here. And then the bull bear one's a little bit lower. So the better risk one would be if we get a nice candle here and it takes out all three of those. I would be interested in a long here, but certainly I would not be holding on because I believe underneath there, we might have a really good move on our hands. What do I know? Nice push. And if you wanted to trade the Hail Mary position of this London overnight low, that puts you about um, 1550. If you're interested in a trade there. No, Casey, it's just me. I know enough just to get me in trouble. <laughs> Actually, I know enough just to be able to take a existing code. I don't understand that question. So it took the overnight low. We're now within uh, 11 minutes of news drivers. It's really a no trade zone by time. It's higher risk. You don't know what this candle is going to do. Oh, 15. Okay. Let's say you, um, you wanted to trade this liquidity here at the London overnight low to go long. Well, what I'm going to tell you to do is be greedy and put the order a little further down. Does that make sense? That's why I make that reference. and treat it like a knife catch type of trade for your leverage. The other way to play that is we wait till it takes it and it comes back into range. And then it starts laddering, prove us that that's what's gonna happen because we have at least this liquidity here. Um, I also wanna see, am I in the green range? Yes, I'm in the green range down here. So in this green area, it is better to be looking for longs than shorts. It's just, it's too much colors for me to keep looking at. So I like to dial it down. Um, I'm getting a weird area on my uh, trade of eight Dom. Invalid or missing parameters. I don't, I've never seen that error. Um, 
that's weird. I've never seen that error. Anyone else with a uh, trade of eight Dom? Can you place an order on your Dom without getting an error? It makes no sense. I've never seen that error. Probably it's just all indicators. Oh, there we go. Now it added it, but why did it do that and not accept five? That doesn't make sense to me. Now let me go to five. I got an ATM strategy up that does five contracts. This that should work. Three, four, five. Let me turn off the ATM strategy. Does it let me put the order in? Yep. Okay. Oh well, I just won't use the strategy. Good morning. My wife, the school teacher, her first week off from school, <laughs> she gets to sleep in. Thanks, Jackie. All right, seven, eight minutes here to a Red Folder News event. No trade zone by time. It's just higher risk. Let's go take a peek at everybody else. Okay. 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 Still... Um, extremely mixed, which leads to complex chop, as we have talked about. Red folder news event. Hopefully it'll shake something here. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> All right. Well, no trades this morning, which is kind of expected the day after a holiday with the red folder news event 30 minutes after the opening. It just is what it is. We may not get trades in until tomorrow. You know, let's uh, zoom out here a little bit. Let's go to 15 minute chart here just to, I mean, we're just in the middle of this yuck. In the middle of this yuck. No, thank you. I like to trade the edges. The edges are usually your friend. At least you'll have a good trade location. And many times trade locations is the key to the gift of break even. All right, six minutes to news. I'm going to refresh my coffee. I'll be back. All right, fresh coffee. I'm ready. Let's go. T minus five minutes to news.
All right, let's go take a peek at everybody else. These halfbacks, of course, are very difficult levels for price to get through. And Q and ES looks like that's where they're headed to. So I'm much more interested in a liquidity grab trade here. If this thing pushes through against the bull bear line as a knife catch type of trade. All right, so it took yesterday's little RTH session against a strong level again that has just been tested and tested and tested and defended, defended, defended. Three minutes to news event, red folder. Your levels mean very, very little. Three minutes. If you decide to place an order between now and and when the, the red folder news event calms down, um, trade smaller, wider. I'd rather you give the, you always have the trade off. Do I want more room or do I want more leverage? Which one do you want? You can't have both. No level development at all. Two minutes to news, no trade zone by time. Um. Take a peek at everybody else. As long as Russell is up here, which means the least, and NQ and ES is above half back, the Bulls are still winning for sure. This little down move does not mean we're vomiting. Now we get underneath here, I think we're going to vomit, but what do I know? We'll see. All right. Minute to news. Ideally, I'm looking for us to grab this liquidity at this half back against this bull bear line and us come back in. That's that's where my eyes are. And of course, this news event could do anything. You make sure I drew that accurately. I think I'm pretty on the money there. All right, 30 seconds till news. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our countdown timer. Don't need it. Anybody doing anything? Halfback is 50% of a session high or low, whether that's London, Asia, or RTH. Typically, I only care about the RTH. Flash flood warning for your area. Great. <clears throat> 17 points. Very nice, Toby. Good job, man. Congratulations. Beautiful trade. All right. So here at the strong level against the London overnight low news driver here. I'd love to see it push down here. 
certainly more of a high-risk trade if you choose to take it here at the news release. This is the ES E-mini. All right, so it grabbed that London overnight low. I'd love to see it push down here. Now, if it comes back in and starts laddering up, we'll drop in time frames and find us a, a level to go long on. Let's bring back up. Did I accidentally delete it? I accidentally deleted that last range. Dang it. It's okay. We're in the green area of that range. I'll have to go back and draw it. I usually lock them. By the way, if you draw your ranges, you can lock those levels on your chart. And so they don't move or you and you can't delete them. I should have done that. All right, come on down to the Asia overnight low here. This is Friday's half back against the bull bear line. I would be, I will take a small long here if it gets there. You were hoping it pushed in there on the candle. Uh, I'm going to drop in time frames here. That might be all the liquidity grab it wanted to do. And maybe we come back in and go up there and make new highs. Man, it almost hit that 1550 level I told you. Would be a good knife catch long if you wanted to be an early. Um, early is the wrong word, but... Um, I would just w was going for the deeper liquidity grab here, but it would not have gotten me in at the 1550. That's where I had five contracts set to go long. Uh, but then it got too close, so it is what it is. All right, nice move back up. Here's the RTH half back, the, these green hash marks, which is typically going to have a reaction for today's half for today's range that's half back that's also the london overnight low two levels together let's say it pushes right through that that shows us the strength of the bulls if you would have gotten if you could have gotten long here i wanted two more ticks um yeah you're you're in a good trade but i was wanting greedier <laughs> Greed is good when it comes to entry. Um, so we're fair value gapping up with volume and balances being left behind. Yes, Kim. All right, so I would very much be interested in a long above the RTH halfback here. Um, if this thing pushes down to here, the strong level will probably represent a, a small long for me. Um, In fact, 19 and 20, if you were interested in a first ladder long, now this, we are on a super low time frame. We're on a 30 second chart here. Um, but if you were interested in a long 20 to 19 as a small test entry, you're never gonna get hurt with one little contract <laughs> unless you get stupid. Well, and I can't control that. But it pops above this uh, RTH halfback. That definitely shows strength. Let's go take a peek at everybody else. Interesting. Pushing new lows. Interesting. And if you wanted to be short against the overnight low, and that halfback is also an area that you could have 
when short. But after a liquidity grab, I don't like to trade counter. So that I don't like to trade counter. And if I'm going to play a liquidity grab long, I prefer a second ladder, not a first ladder. But if you um, wanted to be, that 20 to 19 makes sense to me as a long. but it's a first ladder. That's the most dangerous entry there is. But welcome to trading. Second ladder gives you confirmation in my humble opinion. Now, if price continue, let's say price continues to go down, we'll throw on this trend line for the RTH. Um, at this point, I don't think it's necessary, but if we continue down, I certainly will, because I think that will be validated of the trend line. But if we pop up over this half back here and this overnight low, I think that represents a good long, just no VWAPs in your way, openings in your way. We get above those two things, <laughs> no more shorts. Shorts are over until way up there where we can trade the edge. Well, I had an order to go long at 1950 and didn't get there. I was compromising between the middle. <laughs> um, so now I, if it came back down to me, I would not be looking for an entry because I want to see this thing now continue up. It, it bounced at the edge of that range, which is shows strength. Now let's just see what happens. Can we get over the overnight low and the half back? Or is it going to fail? This tells us, my opinion right here tells us everything. The high of this candle right here. Do we get over it? Or they're going to say, nope. So if I was long, I would just have my stop one tick behind that is where I would have it and just hands off. And once again, strong storms in the area. If I lose electricity this time, I'm just shutting it down for the day. I'm just going to say <laughs> it's telling me not to trade. And if you're in an area where there's always bad weather, it's always a good practice to make sure you have a stop in. But today would be even more important. <laughs> All right, it's failing here at this RTH half back and overnight low. Can't seem to ladder over it, not yet. Hmm. Yeah, Casey. All right, can it pop it? Man. You know, you hate those days where 15.50 was where I said I'd be interested in a small long. It's really looking for a greedier position here. 20 to 19.50 for a long. It just didn't quite get there. Oh, that's interesting, Casey. All right. Can it pop this? This is the key area. This is, this, without a shadow of a doubt, in my opinion, puts bulls firmly in control. Just horrible level development. Let's go back to a three-minute chart. Um, it didn't give me into my 30-second entry, so oh well. Let's come back and look here. Um, yep, let's see what happens. Oh well. Sometimes you don't get your entry. It is the day after a holiday. I just have to reiterate that. It's really a poor day to trade. But that strong level looks like it defended again.
Anybody get long down there? Didn't hit my price. Oh, nice. Nice, Mark. Mark is long in queue. I would assume in queue. Very nice. All right, let's spread this out a little bit. Let's bring it in a little tighter so we can see everything even better. Where is everybody in relation to the session levels? A hundred percent, Mark. You know, I mentioned you this weekend. I did a couple private Zoom trainings with members and I uh, mentioned you and, you know, uh, this week when you uh, rejoined, you said, I got to focus on the $50 a day. It's, and it's true. And then you require, and then you allow your account balance to dictate what leverage can I trade today? The account balance tells you it's not how you feel. It's not what day of the week it is. What's the account balance? What's my remaining drawdown? Those things determine your leverage today. And if anyone prematurely, just like this morning's tip, I thought it was so speed is not your friend. <laughs> and I'm not saying that you were trying to play speed, but we've all tried to accelerate our results. And unfortunately, oh, I was. <laughs> and unfortunately, that road is a slower road. It's more bumpy. <laughs> it's a, a steeper incline than we would like it to be. You really have to allow your account size or your trailing drawdown, depending on what accounts you're drawing, you're trading to dictate your size. You have to earn the right for higher leverage. You know, and the first thing I would tell someone who is ready to leverage up, say, like, great, no problem. But here's when you can leverage, when you, you at, when you can increase your leverage, when you are adding to a winning trade. Not your initial entry. But when you can add to your winning trade. You want to leverage up because your account balance has, has earned you the right to do that. Why not do it on the add-on? Most people aren't good at adding to a winning trade. So if there was a place to trade bigger, do it on your add-on. Well, Kim, I believe, especially with our system, we have a very good system. And what I want you to do is to learn to make 50 bucks a day. That's 10 MES points a day on average. So at the end of the week, if you made 50 MES points, you did great. 10 to 50 points a day is my goal. And that's based off the weekly total. Today, it's probably going to be zero points. Um, and the reason why I say that is because if you can make 50 bucks consistently, and here's what's happened. I'll, I'll tell you the biggest downfall to our system is honestly, it's so successful that traders get to where they don't know how to take losses. And then they think they start telling price what price is going to do and they leverage up because they haven't had a losing day in weeks, some months. And then they think they tell the chart what to do. And then they start getting into trade early because I, I, I just know it's going to go up. No, and, and, and before you know it, they're not trading core strategy anymore. Um, and so every day we, we, we try to reinforce that trade the lines that bounce. Um, so like I said, I would not have traded a second long here. I would have wanted to be in the first long. Um, so as it comes in, that's totally fine. I'd love to see it bounce. But like I said, if it can't take out this here, I think 
you know, that's that's the line in the sand. So we'll see what happens here. Now I have no interest in longing here as a knife catch trade. I was interested on the news event, but now if it comes into here, I need the bulls to prove they're going to defend price. Otherwise, I'm looking for a shorts down here. In fact, I need to go back to my hourly time frame here, guys. I um turned I deleted my range. I need to go back and redefine that. So I believe that's pretty much where it was. Let me go back to here. I feel comfortable with that. Now let me lock that in. <laughs> you just lock it. But now I'm going to turn it off because I don't need to see it. I want to turn back on my strong levels. Um, let's do this real quick. Let's go to high drawings. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. I'm already learning a couple things here about this new little indicator thing that I'm working on to show us the NQ. I only need to have one dot. I have like five or six dots thinking they would move in unison and it doesn't, I forget that. So I need to have one big dot right here and that's where price is. Um, so I'm already learning something there. Um, NQ is NQ right here and is, and is Dow down here and is righty up here. Let's go double check. Yep. I think all of that's accurate. I just need to change that to one big dot. All right, I'm gonna do that on my other screen here. Let me bring up that indicator and let me make this change. Let's see, current price, one. Um, one, let's try this with one, one, save. All right, let me go in here. Let me change the size of that. Can I do that here? Nope. I need to do it in the software and the programming. see what size that is on righty. I think that works, that big dot, that size. Let me change that for all of them. Let's save it. All right, I just need to adjust where it is according to the line. That's kind of cool. So they are moving in real time. I forgot about this actually. Do we like that guys? Yeah, adding to losers. You know, I recorded this video once I probably need to record it again where I talked about not adding to a losing trade. I will not add to a losing trade. I will not add to a losing trade. I will not add to a losing trade. And I said it over and over. And one guy made in the comments. He says, you know what? Every morning I go and listen to that. <laughs> so I hear it in my head. I will not add to a losing trade. And literally when I'm in a trade, I hear my own self saying that <laughs> it's kind of weird, but I think good too. Um, I will not add to a losing trade. Um, offset. Let's go to 85. That's for NQ. Let's go to 105. 125. Save. 
you know, and actually I like the new apex rule of you can only add once to a losing position. Um, and this weekend I alluded to that, not alluded, I actually talked about it and how I would trade different apex accounts. And one of them is if you're going to add, just do it at the edge of before your stop loss, the edge of the stop loss. You know what I mean? where, okay, that add on is literally going to only take three ticks of heat. That's, that's smart. That is so smart. I have no problem in trading the edges. So if you're going to do five contracts, yeah, I know I'm still streaming. I'm going to do it on Tuesdays. I think each Tuesday. Um, but thank you, Mr. Toby. Thank you. Um, it gives people a free zoom pass, you know, um, which is fine. Um, so yeah, I think it's smart <coughs> guys. I like this over here. <laughs> I like this. Is this cool? I think it's pretty darn cool. It's just too big. I've got to adjust the size of this. It's just way too big. Okay, that's cool. All right, so I know it's working in real time. It's, it, it, it's con you know, one of the things that's hard about this PineScript programming stuff is it'll draw something, but then on the next candle, it duplicates it, and you have to go and delete the previous one. Like, it's a whole thing. All right, guys, well, this is literally just not the prettiest price action. And like I said, I I didn't know if I'd get a trade today. The day after holiday just stinks. Um, when I'm done with my session this morning, I'm going to go and work on this indicator, see if I can shrink in it and then maybe add it to the essentials indicator and I'll update the essentials indicator. Um, and I put them in order by correlation, NQ first, then Dow and Russell. You know, Russell means very, very little in all honesty, but I still want to look at it. Um, I think that's cool. I love it. All right. So certainly evidence of laddering up. The bulls are still in control on that strong level. Definitely uh, helps in my opinion. Let's draw that back in there. Very, very nice. Let's go back to a 30 second. And the reason why I want to go back to that 30 second, see that front side? They're on a 30 second with that fair value gap. They filled it. You would prefer to see that not happen. You'd prefer to see that stay open. But price wants to fill those voids. But if it's a strong move, strong directional move, it will leave them. So this is not a strong directional move. That's what that's telling us. They can't even leave behind a 30 second gap. Are you kidding me? Now we know that by break levels as well. If you can't break a break level, well, break levels tell us all. What a small range. Are we at this 13 point range? Oh, we're a little past it. Good. Typically we find if the first hour of trading is 13 points or less, it's rarely worth trading till the afternoon. Come back and look. Um, I won't be here this afternoon. My daughter graduates. So this is it for me. You know, Kim, if you're still listening, you know, you said that's my downfall. You're talking about adding to a loser. Um, You know, one of the things that we really try to stress in our group is not adding to a loser, but we're once we're in a winning trade, most traders are looking, when do I get out? And we are looking, when do we get to add? So imagine if you're consistently reinforced, do not add to your losing trade, but you're in a winning trade and now let's add. How do we stay in a winning trade and make 10, 20, 30, 40 points? We're really good at that too. And, um, um, yeah. 
And here's the other thing I would say, if you knew you had a winning system that you really, you truly had a winning system, whatever system that is, you knew you had a winning system. Wouldn't you just get out and wait for the next trade? Just get out and wait for the next trade. One of the things we're really good at in our group, and I hope you guys are, I mean, I, I, my own traders, but taking the gift to break even that when our level doesn't bounce in 98% of the cases, you'll be given the gift of break even. And I continually stress, take that gift. It is a gift. And wait for the next trade. This is this is nothing here. Uh, Pre-market, it told us we were in for a complex chop. And this is certainly what we're getting. This is no different than the opening. Hey, George, you mentioned adding to a winner. Yes, sir. Um, do you, so you, you scale out at one and two points, but then as it starts laddering up, sure. you're adding back in. Is sure. that what you mean? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once it creates new bounce levels, think about that. It's not just because, okay, so we trade the bounce. We 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 take contracts off 1.2 points or whatever, however you want to do that. But if you're adding, that means prices moved so nicely. It's now creating new bounce levels. If I wasn't long, I'd be getting long because it's a new bounce level. Does that make sense? Yeah, in my trading um, uh, broker, whenever I do that, it it adds, it moves my yeah. Um, Who cares? Balance up. Yeah, it sucks. Like it doesn't yeah. calculate it right, and it's fine. It moves the entry up, so so yeah. if it pulls, it needs to be far away from your entry. All it does, from what I, you know, in trade of it, it 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 it'll 